What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got the best exploding crossbow loadout when facing off with the Terminant. And with the most recent update with Helldivers 2, the exploding crossbow has basically come up to be one of those S plus primary weapons, one that is basically one of the most formidable and versatile when it comes down to different builds you can slot in with this one and giving you the capability of just truly being able to destroy just about everything with basing off of the Terminant. It may not have the same capabilities against the automatons, but it's equally as good on both sides. And do hit that subscribe button as we'll have another automaton loadout with the exploding crossbow coming out later this week. But with the exploding crossbow now having a larger blast radius and more explosive damage, it is the perfect weapon for a bit of crowd control and some serious damage when facing off with something like a Charger or even a Biotech. This loadout is going to have just about everything you need as well as being a bit of a versatile class loadout. Giving you the capability of playing slow and at a distance to take out some of those enemies or even if you want to end up just going a little bit aggressive or possibly have a little bit of the hybrid of the two depending on the situation you're facing off with in any one of these dives, this loadout is going to have you back and have just about every answer you need for any situation you may face off with. With that being said, we've got more than a few things to cover so let's jump straight into it, starting off with the exploding crossbow. And when it comes down to the explosive crossbow, we'll start off with the three negative things about the exploding crossbow before we get into all of the things that'll benefit you when facing off of the terminate with this primary weapon. Now the first negative aspect is obviously going to be its fire rate. It's something that does seem a little bit slow and it can feel even slower if you're somebody that just keeps spamming the trigger. You may have noticed this before, it does seem as if one of those moments where if you do start spamming the trigger and you do end up Hitting the trigger just before the bolt actually loads, it almost feels as though it extends the time before you can actually fire that next bolt after it's been loaded in. And one way to compensate for this moment is to either get it down by timing or, in a combination, visually see as soon as the bow expands, you'll notice you've just fired the shot off and you'll need to wait until it just closes all the way back in. You'll also hear a little bit of an audible clicking sound as soon as it's actually back in and loaded. And that's going to be the moment where you'll be able to fire. It feels much faster when you're actually able to sync it with those moments instead of just constantly trying to spam that trigger, which can cause you to have less bolts flying out as quickly as possible. But over time, after using it for a while, you'll more than likely still find yourself in some situations where you'll just be spamming that trigger. But overall, you'll get into the rhythm of being able to fire this as quickly as possible. And it may even feel sometimes as fast as the shotguns with their fire rate, but just a little bit slower. But once you've got that timing down, it's going to be an explosive good time. Now the second drawback to the exploding crossbow is going to be the fact that it only has five rounds in each one of the magazines that we'll be pumping into this, but we will get eight in total, so we'll have plenty of rounds with this to go the distance. And the last negative aspect to this weapon is the simple fact that you can blow yourself up quite easily. It's like the Scorcher, if you shoot anything well too close and you're within that blast radius, you may find yourself one-tapping yourself pretty quickly. So do keep that in mind anytime you're getting bum rushed by some of those enemies. Make sure that you're switching to the secondary or possibly the support weapon in order to clear out some of those smaller units that may be directly in front of your face. As if you forget you've got the crossbow out, you land that shot, you're gonna blow that bug up, but you're also gonna blow yourself up. But now let's talk about the good aspects to the exploding crossbow. It has fantastic crowd control capability. You'll be able to lock down some of those bug breaches as long as they're at a little bit of a distance. And if they're a little bit too close to you and you find yourself in a situation where they're just far enough out to where you can blow them up, it may be an ideal situation to shoot off to the left or the right of them just behind them to get that stagger power to push them to the left or the right, as well as dealing that damage towards them. And with smaller units such as the Hunters or some of those little ticks or even the Brood Warriors, you'll be able to one-tap all of these within the explosive radius of this. So you'll be taking out groups of them and you'll be able to take them out really efficiently with each one of the exploding crossbow bolts. On top of that, it does really well against the medium units such as the Hive Guards. You will be able to one-tap them if you get a direct hit on their body. Otherwise, it will be a two-tap every time and the two-tap is anywhere within the blast radius. It doesn't even need to be a direct hit. As long as they're within the blast radius, you'll be able to take down any one of these Hive Guards in just two shots. And if you've been on some of those maps before where it feels like the RNG with the spawning has just turned the entire match into a Hive Guard Fiesta, Sometimes the exploding crossbow can work out really well in those instances, especially with those other primary weapons that can make it through the medium armor. The exploding crossbow having that blast radius and stagger is going to be mulching through those hive guards very easily. On top of that, it does have the capability of also three shotting any one of the alpha commanders anywhere on the body. You don't even need to land headshots. And the greatest thing about it is they'll crumple as soon as that third shot hits them. 
and you could even shoot at the ground beneath them and just encompass the blast radius to hit one of those alpha commanders and it will just cause them to just fall over instantly no more of that we've blown the head off and it just keeps charging forward it's going to drop right there where you landed that last third bolt and you will be able to take out groups of them with three bolts if they're right on top of each other which can happen quite often with the mega nests or possibly even just in super hell dive at any given time so it makes it a little bit of an easy cleanup with the exploding crossbow or some of those alpha commanders as well as having that stagger capability of pushing them back every time that they're hit with the explosive radius on top of that the most annoying enemies generally besides the hunters with the terminate are going to be those bloaty bugs the bile spewers thankfully will be able to two shot either one of the variants the green or the orange with this weapon it acts as very similar to the grenade launcher, almost like a primary grenade launcher, and we'll just be able to blow them up effectively with the exploding crossbow and making them a little bit less of a nuisance for us. And if they are getting a little bit too close, do be mindful of shooting towards the back end of them so that explosion is further away from you and just being able to encompass them within that explosive radius, not only staggering them and stopping them from puking, but at the same time dealing that massive amount of damage and blowing them up without having to switch over to a support weapon or secondary in order to deal with them before you can get far enough away to use that exploding crossbow without blowing yourself up at least. And on top of that, we also have the capability of taking down chargers and charger behemoths with this with just three shots to the back end of them on that little weak spot. You can take it out from the front if you shoot up underneath them towards one of the legs and get that blast radius on the weak spot itself. It can be a little bit more tricky to use the exploding crossbow in this way as compared to the grenade launcher, but you can get it done. Generally, I'd say your best bet is to just wait until they run past you and hit direct hits on that weak spot in order to conserve on that ammo but you can end up going for the route of trying to get it done before they end up charging, and sometimes you might get pretty lucky depending on your shot placement and what type of terrain they have underneath them, which is going to cause a little bit of discrepancy whether or not that bolt's going to fly all the way to that back leg, and with the arc on this, it does dip a little bit, so it can be somewhat tricky in certain instances. But if you've got somebody with an arc thrower on your team, they'll be able to hold them still and you'll just be able to easily land all three of those shots into the back weak spot and taking out those charger behemoths very quickly. And now you will be able to take down Vile Titans with this since they have made the change to the underbelly where you can blow off the underbelly and then the exposed weak spot underneath it. Once you start hitting the abdomen with the exploding crossbow, you should be able to get it done within 9 to 10 shots, I believe. It may be a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on how much damage they've taken just before that. But overall, this is going to be something that I would say is... Not exactly the most ideal situation, you will need to get directly up underneath them and it can have a little bit of blowback depending on the terrain you're on. If you're close enough to that abdomen, you may end up hurting yourself with the explosion. It may not be an instant one tap, but it will knock you over and it will cause damage and it can make it very easy for the Bile Titan to just decide to move over. And one of the biggest jokes I've made since the beginning of this game is that Bile Titan legs are the most dangerous thing in the game and that still rings true today as any time that thing just grazes you you instantly just flop over even after they're dead but if you want to just get a little bit buck wild and you want to just decide that your primary weapon is going to be able to just take down everything that is terminated by all means go toe to toe with that thing try to dance underneath it and take it down you should take it down pretty easily and a lot more easily than some of the other weapons or at least the primary weapons but it's still going to be a dangerous run, and more than likely, if you've got more than a few of those other smaller terminated to deal with, that dance is going to be quite the dangerous one. But it can be fun to be able to just get it done with the primary weapon, especially if you've died, can't get to your support weapon, or possibly don't have any stratagems off cooldown just yet, the exploding crossbow can get it done. And when it comes down to the Impaler, you will actually be able to destroy the Impaler when you hit the weak spot with this with just four bolts. So the Explosive Crossbow is doing quite well at being able to take out the Impalers. We will have some answers for the Impalers if you're not able to get over to them. But if you're able to arc any one of those bolts over to an Impaler, you're going to be blowing them up quite easily. And if you come face to face with one of the Impalers and they have each one of their tentacles armored in front of their face just shoot off to the right or left or just underneath those tentacles and you'll still be able to actually damage them with the explosive radius and you should be able to get it done in four shots sometimes five because of the way that the explosive radius is dealing damage from that drop off or depending on how close that face is to that actual blast radius but that can make the impalers quite easy with this primary weapon 
And last but not least, this can close up those bug holes, so do keep that in mind. This is going to be perfect for pushing into some of those nests, especially the new Mega Nest on Super Helldive. It's going to make it an efficient process of being able to just use that primary weapon to arc them over into some of those bug holes, or even when facing off with some of those stalker nests. Thankfully, you don't have to switch weapons or rely on grenades. You can just toss this one over or shoot in the general direction of it and get it done really easily. The exploding crossbow got put into the dirt, but now it has been brought back to life and I am loving every second of using this and there are so many different builds to put with this one, but finally I have the grenade launcher primary that I was looking for as soon as this even came into the game and it's been brought back in an even better way than it was before. But let me know down in the comments below how you're feeling about the exploding crossbow and how it's been performing for you. Now coming up right after that when it comes down to the secondary, I've actually been using the bushwhacker for the simple fact that it's basically a pocket punisher. It has the capability of dealing quite a lot of damage but on top of that, the big thing about this is the fact that it has the stagger. It can push back any one of those alpha commanders. It can push back any one of the brood warriors or hive guards. And it's basically going to be able to just one tap any one unit that may be directly in front of you. And in any moment that it may end up being more units than you possibly need to deal with. The big thing with this loadout is once we get to the stratagems, we'll have the answer to that with our support weapon. But when it comes down to those moments when you may have come back in, you don't have your support weapon, but you need something that has the capability of pushing some of those units back and then be able to switch back over to the exploding crossbow and finish them off, the bushwhacker is going to get the job done quite nicely. But if you're not a fan of the bushwhacker, or if you possibly don't have it, the redeemer is always one of the greatest secondaries you can possibly slot into any one of those loadouts you may have. And when it comes down to our throwable, we're going with Thermite. This is going to be our answer for chargers. And it's going to be one of those set it and forget it moments. If you haven't noticed, the Thermites have been increased with their damage all the way up to 2000 damage. Pretty much anything you stick this to, it's going to destroy it besides a Bile Titan. This is going to be something that we could use against Bile Titans in general. If you get the arc right on this, if you land the Thermite directly on the head of a Bile Titan, it can technically one tap them. But for the most part, we won't be using it for the Bile Titans. That is a secondary option for this. Anytime that we see a Charger, we're just going to toss this over at their forehead, let them dash past us, and it's one of those set it and forget it moments. We don't have to look back. We don't even have to bother. This thing is going to finish them off before they're capable of charging back at us. And it's just going to make those moments so much easier to just be able to deal with the chaff and the medium type enemies while that Charger just blows up in the distance behind us and we don't even have to look back. Now we do only get three with this, but we'll have some stratagems we'll talk about here in a moment that are going to maintain the capability of having every thermite that we need throughout the entire dive that we take in order to deal with any one of the charges we see throughout the entire match. This is Super Hail Dive Certified. And when it comes down to the armor that I would say is going to be best in slot for this, I would say Peak Physique is going to give us every bit of the capability that we need. We don't necessarily need recoil control with this one, we just need the capability of moving that crosshair as quickly as possible and keeping it on the target as quickly as possible. But a nice secondary option is any one of the armors with the medkit armor passive, as no doubt this is going to further increase our overall survivability tenfold by having an additional two stems. Now let's talk about the stratagems you'll need to build out this loadout. Starting off with the Stalwart. This is going to be everything about crowd control, and this is going to be the weapon that is going to perfectly pair with the crossbow anytime that we have some of those units pushing too close to us, especially those hunters right after some type of bug breach or possibly had a patrol roll up on you and you didn't notice. We need something that we can quickly pull out and then immediately just start mulching those crowds, and the Stalwart is going to get that done. Now not only that, but with this update, the Stalwart got a damage increase, and it is very much noticeable. If you start dumping these rounds into one of the faces of those Alpha Commanders, you will be able to chew through them, as well as still having enough ammunition beneath that in order to just keep churning through that chaff. And the Stalwart paired with the Peak Physique is going to be perfect for those moments where we'll be able to take out the Shriekers in the sky, as well as just moving from target to target as quickly as possible, maximizing the amount of shots that we can land with this, and minimizing the time that we have any one of those enemies capable of pushing on us and dealing that damage. If not, just being able to lock down some of those bug breaches and just have a good time just pulling that trigger and holding it down and just cutting through those crowds. Now coming up right after that for our second strategy, we're going to be using Supply Pack. This is just going to give us the capability of just maintaining ammunition across the entire match. Not only are we going to be able to maintain that ammunition for our Exploding Crossbow and our Stalwart, but at the same time, we'll also be able to refill our Thermites and our Stems. So maximizing our overall survivability, giving us the capability of also being able to supply some teammates at times, if need be, unless you just one of those green 
greedy players like me where, yeah, this is basically just for me and I'm ready to have a good time. I brought this in for myself. But overall, it's going to give us everything that we possibly need when it comes down to the ammunition, stems, and the thermites that we'll need in order to just eliminate every enemy that we may be facing off with. Coming up right after that for our third stratagem, we've got Orbital Rail Cannon Strike, which this is just literally going to be about our... I win button when it comes down to Bile Titans. Anytime that we see one, we'll just be able to toss this out. And with this recent update, the Orbital Rail Cannon Strike is now a one tap to any one of those Bile Titans. I have not seen one time that this thing has ever failed me just yet, except for one particular moment where it decided to hit a Hive Guard instead of the Bile Titan for whatever reason. But beyond that one time, out of all the other times that I've used this, every time it's taken down that Bile Titan, and this is just going to be the perfect I win button anytime that you just need to be able to just take down that one target as quickly as possible. And since it is a one tap now, that three minute cooldown is not as harsh as it once was, and more than likely by the time you see another Bile Titan, this should be back up and ready. And you can also use this against Impalers or possibly Shrieker Towers or the Spore Trees if you need be in some of those moments to just clear that out as quickly as possible. And coming up last but not least, we've got the Eagle Napalm Airstrike. You really can't go wrong with adding this one into the actual loadout considering it's just perfect for being able to lock down some of those bug breaches, increasing our overall crowd control capability, sometimes with perfect timing and perfect placement. This is all you'll need along with the Stalwart and the Explosive Crossbow to really lock down some of those bug breaches by yourself. Generally, you will still need one other person as it can get somewhat overwhelming and super hell dive with some of those bug breaches. But overall, the Eagle Napalm Airstrike is going to make it a much easier and much more manageable experience as well as just benefiting the team in the long run and giving you the capability of also cutting off some of those rear flanks that may be happening or possibly being able to blanket this over some of those bug nests that you may be coming across by yourself that may be the smaller ones giving you the capability of just burning it out then coming in with the explosive crossbow or the stalwart cleaning it out and then using the explosive crossbow to finish off the bug holes around it instead of having to deal with the units that are crawling out of those bug holes you'll be able to just allow them to get burnt instead of chasing after you so that way you have the time to be able to just blow up those bug holes yourself now there are some alternative stratagems that you could choose and the first one i'm going to talk about is if you don't want to use orbital rail cannon strike because you feel like the cooldown time is just a little bit too long and it just doesn't end up benefiting you in the long run you really can't go wrong with going with something like the eagle 110 millimeter rocket pods they almost have the same capability you should be able to just throw one of these towards a bile titan and within two of the rocket pods you generally will be able to take them out but on the occasion depending on the angle of the rocket pods you can actually one tap a bile titan if it hits it directly in the head that has happened more than a few times and with the increase of the damage with this update they have been even more successful at getting this done on top of that with the rocket pods if you blow up the armor on the back side of any one of those bile titans you can actually land shots with the explosive crossbow towards that shoulder at the front in order to hit that exposed weak spot on their back and you will be able to finish them off in that method or for one of the better uses of this if your teammates have support weapons like the auto cannon the hmg the laser cannon or any one of the other support weapons that's just been benefited for the simple fact of being able to damage bile titans now if they don't have rocket pods but you do and you throw one of these at one of those bile titans generally the rocket pods are going to cut that health of that bile titan in half and it's going to be much easier for your teammates with these support weapons to just cut them down as quickly as possible and it'll be able to conserve on the total ammunition of each one of your teammates support weapons that they have available instead of having to dish out the total maximum amount they would need in order to take down that bile titan they'll be able to get it done in half the time and then be able to just move on to the next targets if not just start working on the crowds that may be around you on top of that you could choose the eagle 500 kg bomb this is something that could end up being a little bit of crowd control on top of being the one answer for dealing with some of those bile titans as yet again this is another thing that did get improved with the update as it now has a much larger blast radius to it very similar to the actual visual explosion explosion itself and can be quite dangerous now I've died to it more than a few times the only problem is it's not one of those set it and forget it type of stratagems like the orbital rail cannon or the 110 rocket pods you can't just technically throw it right next to it and immediately think it's going to hit the target there has still been more than a few moments where the bile titan has walked away from this if it was just a little bit far outside of that blast radius and if you have something like call-in time increased, this can affect that as well. But the 500 kg can be that big boom that's a lot of big fun. And if you're not a fan of the Eagle Napalm for something like crowd control and you want something that's a little bit beefier, or you possibly want something that's just a little more instant and not something you could find yourself trapped in burning, 
Eagle Cluster Bomb is going to be great for that crowd control and can also deal with some of those bloody bugs as well and be a little bit of damage towards some of those medium type units. But if that seems still a little bit too dangerous for you and you need something that has a higher payload to it but a little bit less of that larger radius that could end up chewing through some of your reinforcements, the Eagle Airstrike is always going to be a fantastic option. And do keep in mind with Eagle Airstrike, it does have the capability of damaging Bile Titans, Chargers, and will pretty much destroy any type of unit underneath those two if it's within the blast radius. And on top of that, it can close up bug holes, but generally we'll be getting that done with the Explosive Crossbow, which is why I didn't choose this for this loadout specifically. But it's still an option out there that can be a viable one. But that's going to be the loadout in a nutshell. I've had a good time with this one, and it has been an explosive good time. The Explosive Crossbow has been one of the biggest changes inside of the patch notes for me, or at least with this major patch that has been one of the most fun primary weapons that has been changed out of this. I am having fun with some of the other primary weapons, but the Exploding Crossbow is something that I just seem to keep gravitating towards, especially when it comes down to the next loadout I'm trying to work with. It just seems so versatile right now. It has so many answers to it, such a large amount of damage, and that stagger with that explosive radius it just makes it almost like a no-brainer and it just ends up finding its way back into another loadout time and time again and this seems to be the loadout that i've had the most fun with i do have some other ones that i'm going to be playing around with so do hit that subscribe button we've got plenty more loadouts to come especially over the course of this week and we will have one for the automatons coming up later this week if not tomorrow as well as the rambo loadout which i cannot wait to actually build that one out that's going to be a really explosive good time but let me know down in the comments below, what is your go-to explosive crossbow loadout? What have you been using with this? Have you been enjoying it yourself? Or what other primary weapons are you really loving after this update? I've had more than a few options in front of me, and I'm actually truly enjoying playing the game and just playing around with each one of these combinations, as it just seems so versatile with how many different things I can slot together now, and it ends up working quite well. With that being said, if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to see some of this content live, hit that link down in the description below. Follow me over at Twitch. We'll be streaming daily. And on that note, have a good one.